uh, hi everyone this is nagraj bairaji welcome to visual studio alm video series so in today's video in this video we'll see the new project management features of tfs 2013 update 3 so we'll discuss about how to create product backlog items how to create features task and add them to a iteration do a capacity planning and start the iteration so i've got a team project called fabricum fiber under that i have got a team called as fabricum fiber web team so this team works on the web part of the application so fabricum fiber is a web application so let me go to backlog page here i will start adding all the backlogs and there's a features place page where i'll add the features so features is a very high level so one level about the product backlog items so feature can be considered like i want to have a login feature for my application so i can create a login feature so i can double click and as an owner for that and give a description what it is feature login the app so so it should has a login page so you can mention all the description the entire description logout page maybe it should have on the registration page forward password so many things so we can describe here then what is the business value of that what is the priority when it should be finished so all those things can be done okay so once it is done click on save so i got a feature so i could go and create the implementation product backlog items from here or i can directly go to the product backlog items and go for mapping i have already created some product backlog items like registration page logout page login page so let me map to login feature so you can see here you successfully mapped so once i do that a link will be created okay so let me go back to the features page let me double click on the login and you could see here there are three implementation links that is a child link of the product backlog items okay so from here i even i can create a new product backlog item so when i click on that child so what product backlog item i can create is forgot page okay so let me click on okay now and here i can put an estimation maybe it is 10 so estimation that is the effort is a story point so it's just a relative to the number it doesn't have any unit so let me click on seven close okay so you can see one that is there so like this from feature to product backlog item we have come so let me put story point for all these things when i can do it in excel where i can just uh, copy paste the story points at one shot and save it okay 
okay so now we have got uh, all the product backlog items so the current iteration that is iteration 3 is done okay so so it is done everything is done so it's here in this virtual machine it says july 20 july 12 okay so current date is july 14 so let's prepare for the next iteration that is iteration 4 okay so if i want to create new iterations i should go for the setting link here administer server then go to iteration section then i can create new iterations for example let me create iteration 6 and also the advantage of this is once i choose the initial iteration that is iteration 1 with start date and end date so it will automatically calculates the other one it, at least it will help me to create the other one so iteration 5 ends on august 9 2013 so if i want to create a new child that is iteration 6 so it's all under release 2 so it will give me the next date that is 12th august you can see that and also once i choose that it will automatically calculate the end date so let me click on save and close i'll just check this option go back refresh I should find iteration 6 also here perfect okay so let me plan for iteration 4 now so let me click on iteration 4 okay let me have the team members so I could copy the capacity information from the previous iteration or I could just type so let's say so based on this the team's capacity is defined and the individual team members capacity is defined so this iteration goes for 10 days and i'm saying any will work for five hours per day without any leave or holidays or any interruptions so 5 into 10 it should be 50 hours similarly for the rest of the team members okay let me go back to backlog items so let's say we'll start iteration 4 so i want this to be done in iteration 4 i have to just drag and drop and if you observe the iteration path changes okay and here i can do reordering so in the product backlog page i have to just drag and drop and i can reorder for example this login page i can put it in second power page i want to put it fourth similar similar way there are taggings available where i can categorize items into different tags for example i can add a new tag here or choose an existing tag and i could say save and close you can see that and now i can filter out based on the tags so i want only the items which belong to tfs category i have to just click i could see that okay so this is also a very helpful feature so now let me drag and drop the iteration 4 so whatever sorry before that i missed one step so what we have to do is the team should approve or the product owner should approve these items so you can see so once it is approved 
the team will decide to work on that so these items will be approved by the team so it is like the business analyst or the team member responsible to collect the requirements or features will go and enable go and create items and the product owners or the product owner will approve the items once it is approved it will be committed by the team members that they will work on this particular iteration so the, here the team is committing that they will work on iteration 4 they will complete these things in iteration 4 okay so let me drag all these things in iteration 4 so before that how will i decide what i what items i, I can put in iteration 4 correct so i want to see the previous record so we have completed three iterations i want to see how, how much of work is done in previous iteration so based on that i can give work in iteration 4 so for that we have a velocity chart so it, it shows me that in iteration 1 35 items that is story points were completed iteration 2 49 and iteration 3 50 story points were completed so now i could guess the team can do at least 50 story points of work in iteration 4 so what i'm doing is i'm assigning 10 plus 20 30 45 55 story points worth of work in iteration 4 and also there's one more way where i can easily forecast so i can only click on this and so i will say 55 so like this it will give me the forecasting information so it says all these items can be completed because here i have not defined any story points so it says all these items can be completed in iteration 4 let me now enable and you could see that so it says when i put 55 story points so all the first four items can be completed in iteration 4 and another one item can be done in iteration 5 so with this i could easily see like if i've got 100 product backlog items how many iterations i will take to complete the entire items based on this velocity so if my team is working at 55 story points of velocity the team will take another seven iterations to complete all the 100 product backlog items so i could guess that plus i mean i i can estimate that plus i know the iteration end date so i could easily estimate that when i will be releasing my final product or when i'll be releasing the iterations so all these estimations are very easily you know, calculated here so I don't have to do copy paste on excel then prepare the estimations and all those stuff so the velocity gives me information about how many story points the team can handle and based on that when i go for forecasting i will come to know how many iterations i will take to complete all the product backlog items So there is a board for the product backlog items which gives us information where I could easily see how many are in approved state, how many are in new state, how many are committed. Okay. So and it has got a threshold values like I could say work in progress limit. So I could limit number of items in each of the states or blocks. So there should be only five approved items at any point in time or five committed so beyond that it should show in a red color so that the team is not burdened with more work so even i can customize the columns i can add new states and all the stuff then we have a community flow diagram which gives the count of the product backlog items and the trend with for the different states let's go to the iteration 4 
okay some items are assigned some are not assigned that's fine so i've got the product backlog items now i have to start creating tasks for the developers so these are my developers any brain brain killer julia so let me go and create tasks so for the registration i will go for ui page this should be a ui page so now i'll say this is this will take 10 hours and you could see as soon as i do that the team's capacity is filling up with the items but team members have not got anything so it is not assigned still okay so let me create one more task maybe it's related to db okay so i could say this also will take another 10 hours of work like that i could go and create for each of the things I could even do all these things in an Excel line, put it back here. So, for example, let me go and create a query here. So, I've created a query out of this. Then, let me go back and create a excel file go to team menu new list then connect to fabric and fiber then go to that query iteration for backlog i could see the same items here now it's very easy here to modify the things so i'm saying add a child here for this also add a child two childs for this also add two childs okay so i could just copy paste this So what are the work item types? These are tasks. Okay. So it's done. So let me publish it back. So I created all the items here. So let me put number of hours remaining for each of the tasks. So I'm just copy paste random, but you could easily do all the stuffs here. So let me publish it once again. So like this, you can create all the product backlog items and the task, the entire thing. Okay, so once it is done, let me come back to the so let me just go back to the iteration 4 and you could see the changes ok let me they might be on prom Let me go to the iteration path. They might have a different iteration path, yes. So let me go and put it. Now you should see all the items here. I'm 
am I missing anything? Let me choose area path also. So even that matters. Yes, definitely. Because I'm working on the web team. finally so so you could see right how i can easily create even i could create product backlog items and the task so all those things i can create with one shot in excel then click on publish everything is ready here so now i have left assigning okay the tasks so i just wanted to show it can be done in this way also where I could just drag and drop and assign. So I could do it here also. Even I can do it here. So let me refresh so that I'll get the things so you can see here. And I could assign tasks. And I could copy paste. I could do all these things. I have found a change to maybe any element. I could do that. Then go back and publish. Come here, refresh. You could see all the things done. Yep. So Julia has not got any items. So let me assign brain color is loaded. So let me assign some work to Julia. So you can just check the capacity of team members, see whether they are underutilized, properly utilized or overloaded. So based on that, you can assign the team's work. So I could just go and say, let me do it here itself. I'll go and say it's committed for this particular iteration. So we are committing all these items for this iteration. That is a team is committing. So if we just double click and open, you can see it's committed. Commitment made by the team that they will complete this particular item in this iteration. Okay, so my iteration is ready. So I just fast forward the date to the next date. That is 15th, that is on Monday, so the iteration will start. So I did a change, so let me see. Yep, so you could see here iteration 4. Now, let's assume the team starts working on this iteration. So till now I was a manager or a scrum master or you can say product owner. Now I'll play a role of a developer who will get the work item, who will go and you know, works on the particular task, completes it, updates, and will come back here and see the progress. Okay, so let's say I'm logged in as uh, Julia, right? So let me open Visual Studio. Connect to same fabric and fiber. Click on my work. So whatever items are assigned to Julia will be available. So yes. This is assigned DB. Then what else? Yeah, only one item is assigned. So yes, it's here. So I will say 
that I'll be working on this. Okay, so I could see here, I could say that I'll work on this. I have to just drag and drop. So this is my work section, a new feature in TFS 2013. So when I click on my work, it will display all the work items which are assigned to me that is available and even code reviews which are requested by me or which I have to review. And there's a in progress work and a suspended work section. So in progress, when I put the items here in progress, one is the state changes. And also it gives me other information like if I go and modify any files in version control, it will give me options to check in or to request a review or cancel it or even I can go for suspend and resume where I can set aside my current work safely in TFS. Not only my work, even my IDE settings, the files I've opened, the breakpoints, windows, everything will be suspended and saved safely in TFS. I can go and resume it anytime. Okay, so yeah, I have got an item here. So let me just uh, ignore that. So now I have said I'll work on this DB task. If I double click and open, it says in in progress state, correct? So I'll clear it was in to do state. So here it is still in to do state. Let me refresh. You can see that it's in in progress state. And now let's say Julia works on this. So maybe she will just okay. I've opened the solution. Maybe she will just kind of comment. Say DB tasks completed. Okay. Now I'll go for my work section, and you could see here. So it's already associated the task with the changes. So I don't have to remember the if you use the other versions of TFS, the older versions. So there used to be check-in policies. Yeah, it's still there. So we used to have a work item association check-in policy where the developers will be reminded to associate a task with a check-in. Yes, but here my work feature will automatically associate my task, the current task, which I put it in progress to the changes, whatever I do in my version control. Now I could I could request for a, a review or I could go for check-in. So let me do a check-in here. I'll say it's done, work is done. And check-in. Now that is done, let me come back here. Let me refresh. And I could see it's done. So this way the team starts working and I could see the updates, even everything will reduce. So let me change the date here and check what happens. Let me put it in 16 now. So I'm just fast forwarding the details here. So let me go to home page. Okay. Yes. So you can see a burn down chart here. So now let me go back. So let's say Annie Herman has got a task or so let's say brain killer has got a task. So it's 15 hours. So he has been working on this task from yesterday and today he will complete the task. So let me so I'm logging in as brain killer. So let me connect to the same fabric and fiber team project, click on my work so I could see all these things. So I have got a task. UI page to be created. So I've got mini task and there's a DB task also to be created. So 
so you could see there are so many things to be created I will say I'll work on DB okay then let's say I will complete some items here Maybe just say brain checking the stuff. Okay, as soon as we do that, let's come back here and refresh. And you could observe here the burn down, it's slowly reducing down. Sorry for the interruption. So this is a burn down report and you can see that uh, once I start completing the work it is coming down, it's burning burning down actually. So I've connected as brain. So so even brain has completed some work. So let me change the date again and show you how it works. So Brian has got one more work. So he will complete that. Okay, so it's a lot of space. Let me go and change it. That much. That's three seventy three item. Say so we'll do some more work. Check in now. So by checking in, I can even add my ID if I remember. So 373 was the ID. And I can check. So once I do that, let me come back here and just refresh. So it should further reduce. You could see that it's reducing. So this is a burn down report which gives the start and end date of the iteration and this is the today's status and this is the ideal trend how it should progress and if I want to quickly send a report to my stakeholders so there's a icon mail icon I just click so it will get me all the things I just type the email id or if they are available as team members so I can browse and select and send it and here I can choose what columns I want to show and if we are following scrum and team will be doing a stand up meeting then we can go to the board 
the task board which will help us in stand up meeting and here the team when they are doing a stand up meeting they can check how many requirements are there how many are in to do state how many are in progress how many are done and if some are in progress and taking more time so they can discuss all those things so it is taking more time and all those stuff and even in the meeting if they decide okay this task to be assigned to somebody else they can easily do that change it or if this task was estimated wrong they can go and you know change the values also then it is simple they have to just drag and drop saying it will be in progress state so this is based on the requirements or backlog items i can even group by based on the person the people so i know how like these are my team members and how many items they have there in their bucket and what is the progress and you could see brain color has completed two items julia has completed one item the rest they are to complete and brain hurry has put one item into in progress state so these are the iteration proceeds yeah i forgot to show one thing here if we add more items like for example i'll just change the number of hours here show you how it affects the graphs here at the right side so if i just put here so 40 hours and save you could see so any airman is overloaded with more work because she has got 40 hours of work i mean the capacity she can work for only 40 hours but she has loaded with 65 hours so it's crossing this limit so this is 40 hours limit but the team is okay so they are not burden the team is not burden the but the individual people are burden so we can easily get it here now sometimes it happens the team is not burden but some individual person will be burned down so we can easily check that and maybe we want to rectify that and assigning it to somebody else so let's go to the next part queries so in web access i can create queries yes okay let me create a new query so i not do anything let me just save this let me say right fresh for query so let it be in the shared paths okay So it gives me the results, correct? So if I go here, iteration for query, it gives me the same result. But this gives me a flat list of files. Even I can go for tree structure, but still I can't visualize how many tasks are assigned to Julia or how many test cases. Yeah, and also how many how many work item types are created and what in what state they are. So all the stuffs. So I want to visualize in terms of pie charts or bar graphs, something like that. So how to do it? So it's very easy here. So previous versions we used to spend time creating business intelligence studio reports or report using builder report builder or business intelligence, where we'll query to the analysis or warehouse or sometimes even the collection databases. But now I just go here to the chart section. and create a new chart so i want to create based on the work item type so my chart is ready so i just say okay now so it's done 
similarly i can create a chart based on the work i assign to if i don't like these colors i can even change that okay i can give the name for it i can say based on work item type based on user not only that i can pin it to home page okay let me show you the home page now so this is the home page where we have got tiles and all those things okay so i want even the graphs also available and also i'll show you how to create new tiles so let's go back to work tab here and iteration 4 So even iteration four, I want it to be in home page. I have to just say pinned home page. That's it. So if I come back, so you could see that iteration four. Correct. So similarly, let me go to iteration four. Go to charts. I can pin these charts to home page. Okay. Now let me go to home page. I could see all these graphs. Yes, could see that. Yeah. I can change it. Change the locations. So. So I could create. these queries plus charts pull down in home page so that everyone can see that so like my deliver heads wants to see can even go for the pure tables for just change the colors So I could give any name for that. Once it is done, let's go and pin to home page. So it is available. So it gives a quick information. Plus, I want to see the details. I will just click on this. It will take me to the query where I can see all the items. so what we saw is how to create backlogs and what are the features available at the backlog page like velocity so you can see the current velocity now and then forecasting mapping right so yeah one thing i missed let's go to features so we have got a login feature and it has got a product backlog item and those product backlog item is called task so i want to visualize i mean i want to see that the hierarchy so it's easy i have to just go to view features i'll say features to tasks so you can easily see that so i got a login feature then product backlog and all those things so you don't have to spend time in creating queries it's already there but what you have got is from this you can create a query and modify it slightly and use it or you can create a or you can just send this details to your stakeholders all the features and its yeah currently it's not in a hierarchy of it but maybe it will come soon and even features as the boards 
where we can see all the features and what are in progress, what are done and what are in new stage. Even in the backlog page also I can see that. So backlogs to the tasks. Okay. So what we saw is how to create features and how to create product backlogs, how to map the product backlogs to features and how to create iterations, how to plan iterations, how to do capacity planning, right? And how to break down the requirements that is a product backlog items into task, assign it, and how to see the graphs here based on the capacity of the team members and see whether they are properly utilized or overburned and correct. Then we saw how once the team starts working on that. How could I see the progress and a real time burn down chart will help me in that. Plus we have got many reports also which will help the project managers or team members. So, and also we saw about the these tiles and charts. How to create a work item query, then how to create a work item chart and pin it them to the home page. So these are the default reports available for fabric and fiber. So I could even go for backlog overview and be able to see all the backlog items. I could see that. And also the interesting fact is I could see the backlog items plus whether they are in in to do state and how much still work is pending. Okay, plus I could see how many test cases and test points are there, what is the state of the test points, passed, failed, okay, all the stuff. A complete traceability. The other reports I show you. So there's a velocity, there's a sprint board, sprint board now, release gone down, and there are reports on test cases also. So, in this machine, we may not have much of the data, so whatever is available, I'm going to show you that. Velocity, yes. So this shows me the velocity. Showing, yeah. So iteration one and iteration two. In terms of filters, okay. Then there's a screen burn down. So this is for the entire release. I could drill down it only iteration four which is my current sprint. So this is for the entire place. So now I could, okay, still it's in completing state. This gives me the release burn down. case reports and this gives me the build reports when it was run what is the build name platform config that is the CPU and all this configuration then whether it succeeded or failed or partially succeeded 
and the if we have executed test cases in those builds so it also gives that and the core coverage so this gives the build success over time uh, so for each date whether it is passed, failed, partially succeeded all those So here you could see that test parts but with low code coverage. So all these options are available. Partially succeeded, yes. Succeeded. Built, but there were no test cases. So all these things I'll get to know. Fine, so that's it in this video so we saw the project management features how to create iterations how to plan it how to do capacity planning what is task board how to use it and what is burn down how it will help me okay so all the stuff so thanks for watching